Hello everyone. It's been a little while since I did a video, so we got this fun fabric in yesterday. Decided to make a project and this is it from Maple Island Quilts. And I chose it because we got this beautiful fabric in. Sorry, I'm down here because I can't figure out how to make this camera go any in a different angle. So um, got this beautiful fabric that's kind of got different vignettes going on in it. And this pattern, isn't that gorgeous? And that's just part of the repeat. So um, there's another colorway in a different kind of print. Where's my blue? This one has dragonflies and koi on it. So pretty. That might end up being a summer jacket for me. And then there's a bunch of coordinates. So um, the first thing you have to do with this is fussy cut your panels because you see you've got the four or nine, depending on what you're making. I'm making the wall hanging this one. Um, you've got those panel main elements to cut. So what I did was I have the Creative Grids 20 inch ruler, much more visually accurate and easy to, to do. So when I did that, I decided how I wanted my fabric to be cut. And so this is my main, you see that gets several of the elements in there. So that was the first one I cut because it's the biggest. And then there's two other, this one was the second one I cut because that's the second one that's long. And that's another one you would use this big 20 inch. And then I cut this one. And then I cut my little lotus fly. So by using um, a bigger square ruler, um, you can then lay it down, see where the lines are, cut two sides, um, and then flip the ruler around and trim it up on the other two sides. Um, if you had a spinning rotary cutter, which we just got a nice big I think 20 inch one in, which would be perfect for this. It's 18 or 20, um, be perfect for this application. Um, so you could cut, spin, cut. So I've got that cut and then I needed just eight two and a half inch strips for my um, contrast. And I chose these two colors. So I've got everything cut. Um, I didn't cut my border yet. I'm gonna, I always wait until I get there. But this is going to be my border. Pretty. So I've cut and I have, um, I'm ready to go. So let me move to the machine. Okay, so the first step in this is to construct the strips and um, one of each color, one light and one dark. And you just sew them with a quarter inch seam allowance. Sets of two. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm trying out this um, Baby Lock Accomplish. We haven't had it in a long time, and I wouldn't use it as my primary machine, but if you have um, like a high-end embroidery machine and you want something that can be um, sitting next to it for just um, piecing and things like that, then this is a great option because it's so super fast. It's straight stitch only, but it has some nice features. It has a needle down, and uh, scissors, and it just sews really fast. I did put a seam, magnetic seam guide on it, and I actually like the FOP one. You can get those little uh, metal ones, but this one is really nice because it's got a little handle on it. I'll show you. So it's got a little flange on it that helps you pull it off the machine. And this machine has a really skinny foot so it's a quarter inch foot and so I don't have to have an extra foot for this I'm just gonna go ahead and chain piece all these together and I'm gonna do this eight times
Last one. Okay, so now I have eight sets of light and dark strips, and I'm going to go to the iron, and I'm going to press those um, seam allowances to the light side. Okay, so I've taken all my strips and pressed my seam allowance to the dark side. So just press your seam allowance from the wrong side, and then flip it over, and press it again from the right side. So you have some nice smooth strip sets. And then while you're here, take your center blocks and give them a quick best press. And we have these continuous spray bottles that I empty my best press bottle into because they make spraying the best press so much easier. No pump, 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 just one or two pumps. And then turn your steam off for this so that you can iron it dry. And now we've got everything pressed. We're gonna go and subcut our um, strip sets. All right, okay, so I have subcut all of my strips. And what I did was, the pattern gives you instructions on what size to cut them. I just kept all the subcut strips with their blocks so that you can then see kind of what they're gonna look like, very pretty. And because I was such in an economical cutter with only this much left over, I have two strips left. They said that might happen. So what you might want to do is make six strips and then cut and see where you are. You might not need all eight. It just depends on your fabric and how careful you are um, with being um, economical with your cutting. So now we're going to piece it together. Okay, so now we're going to put a block together. Now, Things that I've learned after putting three blocks together on my fourth one. Um, when you cut out your center pieces, your center blocks, I want you to overcut them by maybe a half an inch, maybe three quarters, and then take them to your ironing board and then best press them. Get them nice and flat and s solid, you know, terial magic wouldn't hurt, but a couple layers of best press so that they're really stable. And then square them to size. Because what I found is, as you carry these pieces around, as you iron them, things move and stretch. And then I, um, for the first block, I said, oh, I'm just gonna straighten it a little bit, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So my block had a little bit of um, wonkiness to it, a little bit of bubble in the center, because it wasn't quite square. So Pat, if Pat was here, she would kill me. Um, but we all know, I'm a pretend quilter. I just do this when they're easy and fun. Um, so make sure that you um, get your pieces best pressed and then square them up um, on your mat. And then make sure that your um, strips are cut exactly to size and then pin them. So, you know, if you just kind of lay them on there and sew them, things are gonna stretch and then things are not gonna be square and you end up having to square it down. So my first two blocks were a little shaky. My third block was great. So I'm gonna have to, because um, I had to, my first two blocks I had to square up a little bit. So my third block I'm going to have to square down a little bit just to allow for that. And what I'm gonna do is I'll show you when you lay them down, if they're not matching up, just split the difference between the top and the bottom or the side to side and trim those sides so that they match, okay? Um, so when you start doing your blocks, there's a specific order. The pattern gives you the order. It's kind of confusing because there's a little star and it says do a partial seam here. So you sew clockwise around the block. So we're going to start on the top and sew um, part of the top seam. So this is my center and this is the top piece and I'm just going to sew part of it. All right. And make sure you pin so things aren't creeping. the sews. Okay, so that's my partial seam. 
Now this would be a great spot to have your wool mat and your mini iron sitting right next to you because um, there's lots of pressing when you put the blocks together. My ironing board's right next to me, so I'm just gonna go to it. And I'm gonna press the seam away from the uh, center block. No distorting when you press. Yeah, those mini irons save you a lot of up and downs. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my short part of this block. Each block has four outer strips, two per um, size. And then the pattern does show you which size, um, which color goes against the, the center block. It alternates light and dark to give you the um, the grid pattern. So again, you wanna make sure, and if you end up having to, well, if you do like I suggested and best press and then square it up, you should be able to match your strips exactly to the side of the block if you cut precisely. Um, and then pinning them, laying them down and pinning them will keep things from moving and, and growing. All right, so you wanna make sure and do that. And um, once you start sewing, if you have to straighten a little bit to eliminate any bowing in the block, that's fine as long as you're not adjusting the size, the length of the side. that so see I can eliminate that it jutted out a little bit but as long as I'm not adjusting the length of the side I'm good to go so I'm gonna press that oh. and my other tip is to sew from the uh, side with the main block uh, because that way you are sure not to turn your seams so see that seam flipped on me but if you sew from this side, then you will not do that. It's a little rip, but I still prefer to um, to sew from the side of the main block where the seams are, the seam allowances are from the strips. Press that seam away. Okay, so then I, since I have a little bit of overhang, I'm going to just straighten that, and that can happen. So I haven't changed the length of that side at all. Okay. Now I'm going to put my next long piece on. There they are. And this one needs to be with the light side against there. And I'm going to pin the beginning. Dandy, dandy. Those edges together. Oh, and see what I just did again? Let's see. Flip my seam. I don't know why, I just I want to put it down with the strip up. And you really want to put it down with the strip down. But now that I've started this way, I'm going to keep going. I just fixed that seam allowance that I flipped. So 
that's my third side. And I'll take that and press. Okay. And then my last side. Now I could trim that a little bit, just straighten that a little bit. Just a tiny bit of overhang. short side and that's going to be dark pin that on there you could use the clips as well got my wonder clips and my mighty clips I've got my seam guide on there. I do like that magnetic seam guide. Doesn't usually help you with quarter inch. And this, the nice one, thing about this one is I see I can move it forward a little bit. So it gives me a, a barrier up a little bit for my foot just because of this machine is, um, has that quarter inch, that skinny quarter inch foot. seam allowances and make sure they don't turn on me because I put it up and upside down again. Make sure they don't turn. There we go. that one. Okay, then I'm going to just square it, straighten that one out. Yeah. Okay, and then now all I have to do is finish that partial seam that I started on my first side. So this one that's been kind of hanging there, I need to just finish the rest of that. Maybe on this last one, I'll get smart and turn it, the main fabric up. There we go. Those edges together. And all right, I'm going to press that last seam. I'm going to just turn it right sides up and give it a good press from the front. that are peeking out. And there's your block. Doo, doo, doo. So now what I'm gonna do is I will check this for square and um, lay them all out and um, we'll come back and see the final layout. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so I wanna show you this. These are all of the blocks. They are so pretty. I love this fabric. Now, when I lay them out side to side, we're good. So see a match there, I match there. I'm good there and there. And I am good here and here. So my width is good, but if you look, when I line up the bottom and the top, I have a gap of about, oh, I'm gonna call it three quarters of an inch. So the nice thing about this quilt is if you look at it, 
there is no place where you have to match seams, which is, makes it so forgiving. So I can take this and I can um, trim down this side. I can trim it in four places. I can trim a little bit here. I can trim a little bit here, a little bit here, and a little bit off the top, and then I can make a match. And no one will be the wiser. So it will line up perfectly fine there and nothing will look off. So I will come back when we get them all together. So here it is all done. And I just squared it up a little bit, but you see how even though I've had to square it a little bit, trim a little bit, you just don't notice it because there's no intersecting seams. And where there are, they are um, the same color. So you just don't even notice a thing. So here's my border. It's gonna be so pretty. I really like this pattern. So um, now I'm gonna measure the sides. I'm gonna put the side borders on first. So I'll measure both sides and average that number. And then I will um, do the same for the top and bottom once I get those on. And I will post a picture when it's done. Hope you make this project.